welcome to episode 5 of the Flight Brothers FT podcast, recorded on August 28, 2020. In today's episode, Tolus builds a bigger bus, a different Airbus is released, and Microsoft Flight Simulator lands back on your desktop. If you enjoy this content, please click like and subscribe and ring the bell for all of our notifications. If you are new to our podcast format, welcome. And for our returning subscribers, welcome back. Are you interested in supporting the podcast or this YouTube channel? Maybe you produce flight simulation peripherals or software. If you have product information you would like to share with us or our community, contact us at flightbrosft at gmail.com. To follow us on social media, go to facebook.com slash flightbrothersft. And of course, we are on Instagram because who isn't in 2020 and Twitter at flightft2019. We are attempting something a little different with this month's podcast. With the release of Microsoft Flight Simulator and its seamless multiplayer, we've decided to add some footage from today's flight that Lee and I are going to embark on as soon as we record this. So who knows, maybe I won't talk as long today so we can get flying. If you like this idea, let us know in the comments and we'll keep it up. If you hate this idea, uh, you can blame it on me. It was my idea. Right. And it's getting late in the evening, so who knows how long. Actually, who knows how well this will turn out, to be soon, quite honest with you. Very soon we'll have to change this to record it on August 29th, quite honestly. But let's kick it off. What do we have first today, Lee? Okay, well, first let's get through product announcements. Envy Flight, who I have to admit I'm not familiar with, uh, they have established a public Facebook page, and they have a few photos of a work-in-progress CRJ700. Uh, there's no estimated time of uh, availability for this product. But um, for those of you new to the podcast, all of these links, or at least most of them, I think I missed one or two, uh, will be included in the video description. So if you want to see what we're talking about, feel free to click on that. Otherwise, um, the only other CRJ off the top of my head, Tim, that I'm aware of is the J. Rowland uh, CRJ200, but I think it was originally maybe an x-plane 10 so uh another regional jet i was just laughing i was looking here at the uh preview shots and it says engines and wings are not modeled yet so they're they're pretty early on um yeah we've got a cabin trainer <laughs> it's, it's the uh it's the airport fire trainer yeah, and actually, if you scroll down through the comments, there's uh, numerous comments asking when it's going to be due. And uh, It doesn't have yeah, wings well, yet, and people want to know when it's going to be out. I love it. I love hey, it. man, S smear it in uh, hover gel. I think uh, Eddie Murphy and Owen Wilson were in that movie, I Spy, I believe it was. <laughs> and they were talking about a jellyfish and smearing jelly on something when they were looking for that uh, top secret stealthy plane that was stolen. So get a little of that, smear it on your uh, Envy oh. Flight CR jay and you're good to go yeah so that, we'll see how that comes that could be a ways off in the future but hey the next one sounds really cool um it, it's in the list of things i didn't know i wanted until i heard it was going to come out this uh tolis airbus 340-600 if you've listened to any of our podcasts you've probably heard lee and i sort of joking about airbus and the fact that we don't really fly them and uh this is ironic only because I very recently got my first uh, Airbus 320. We just did a review over on fselite.net, or I should say a first look on the INI build A300, which was uh, fantastic. Loved it to pieces. And so then right around the time we're finishing that up, we find out about this. So uh, are you excited about this one, Lee? Uh, more so now. Um, I, you know, I think I had mentioned to you when we were flying the INI build A300, I actually went back to my Flight Factor A320, programmed the FMC a little bit, and actually took it out. So that's the first time it's been out of the hangar in probably a year and a half. Nice. So Nice. Uh, yeah. Thanks to uh, Ronnie over at FS Elite for holding our hand through the McDo programming. <laughs> Yeah, and it, didn't he make a video for FS Elite, or was that on his own personal one? Um, oh, that's a good question. He did send I, us a video. I don't remember if it was his channel or not, but uh, one or the other. Either way, it was great information. It would certainly get us going here. H have you sure. have you seen the A340 in 
in the flesh in person the the six um, the 600 model this is the longest no. one right well, yes, this was the longest one, and it was the longest commercial airliner up until the 747-8. Right. So I had seen, um, it was, uh, it was, my, was it Virgin Australia? I was out at LAX, and yeah. uh, one of these taxied by us, and man, it, it's just such a thing to see. It's just... A little bit ludicrous in how much it's stretched and I'm sure it's really interesting to fly because um, I mean just look at it it's hard to imagine not having a tail strike <laughs> so well it's an Airbus it won't let you <laughs> that's right it's all right the, the, soft, the software doesn't allow it sir it's not, not a problem because you're <laughs> not, not really the one flying it the computer is all right oh, well, that's yeah. great what do we have uh, what, what else we got here we are on to product releases. Those were the only announcements that I was aware of uh, for this month. So the Torx Sim Take Command SR22 uh, was released at the end of last month. So that's why we're hitting it here. Um, this one, you know, I was very much looking forward to uh, purchasing, which I did. And uh, unfortunately, I've only flown it once. I didn't read all the instructions, which due to something in it it requires the 1150 x plane beta release mm. um and it's it, it's an issue that you can still fly the aircraft but you're uh purely like hands-on like it won't uh i think the mfd if i recall doesn't function and the autopilot doesn't function if you don't have that beta okay. i've got no problems with beta aircraft but i don't want to have my quote flight simulator system be beta because if that takes a dive um right yeah you know there's a funny thing because we're on the forums a lot and so for for those of you who are listeners go ahead to us in the comments are, are you the beta crowd or not because uh, lee and i generally shy away from being the first ones to test it i mean if you send us an aircraft we'll, we'll test it out for you and make videos but we're not like oh dude there's a new zebo just came out gotta download it and then get online and cry about the 55 things you found that don't work but uh that's what beta testing is so i'm always a little surprised at the people who get betas and then immediately rant about how they don't work <laughs> like, like that's what you're there to find out yeah and i think some people may not quite understand what they're doing and uh th this was an error on my part that i found by googling the inter uh googling mm. the internet um you know what i'm saying and uh that was one of the first answers I saw. It's like, you must have beta. And I'm going to go, well, that's that's why that didn't work. However, I will say I've flown this and the Hold My Beer, right, which we've talked about on a couple podcasts, I believe. Right. And there are a lot of similarities between them, which is, is good. It kind of stands behind a quality product on both accounts, right? Um, but I did notice the taxiing in this, uh, in the Torque Sim, it had more inertia. And... I, I didn't really give it any thought, but the uh, Cirrus, I guess, has a castering nose wheel, which I was unaware of. So in the Torx Sim, you feel that inertia when you're taxiing and All you're right. and you're steering. It kind of, it's not like on rails. So very cool. Um, looking very uh, forward to actually flying it when I get the chance, but I'm just not willing to risk the Beta X plane. Uh, so I I'll wait until everything settles down on it. Right. Yeah. Don't want to. Don't want to risk. The whole shebang yeah. for one aircraft but from a textures perspective it looks immaculate and the sound was very good uh, of course it comes with the naturally aspirated and turbo alley torm turbo normalized version and uh if i can just offer an aside uh lee was really geeking out telling me all the very technical under the hood type things that they have programmed into it to make it ultra realistic and for lee he was in geek heaven and just couldn't wait to play with it for me mm -hmm. that wasn't you know i just don't want that level of depth because i'm i'm only going to get in it and fly it occasionally and that's just going to aggravate me so uh as they say know thyself if you're the sort of simmer who just probably wants to just get up and fly it a bit hold my beer that's the free one, right? 
It is the free one. Yeah, uh, you can't complain with that. You, you'll be fine. Nope. Now, if you want the high, high level and you really get into those complex systems being fully rendered and being able to actually manipulate them, well, here's your baby. Go play with the Torx in. All right, so um, I'm excited about the next one because we just spent a substantial amount of time working with it. The INI builds, which I apparently have erroneously been calling the INI builds, A300-600R Freighter. And uh, the video is not here on Flight Brothers. It's over on FS Elite's uh, YouTube channel, or you can get it from their new site, fselite.net. But uh, it's just Lee and I creating it. It's just like our videos here on Flight Brothers. Just we did it for there. And uh, great plane. I don't know. What, what more should we say about it, Lee? Um, Other than yeah, go watch the video. <laughs> yeah, definitely go watch the video. Um, I, I don't know if we want to elaborate on it a lot now. Maybe we can catch up with that a bit in the banter section. But a very, very high quality product. And I believe you mentioned it. Uh, we believe this was their first foray into aircraft, you know, into producing one. So for a relative newcomer for a such a complex aircraft, mm -hmm. uh, it was really just very, very surprising, very high quality. Along with that comes a relatively high price. Right. However, um, you know, I think we felt it was uh, much deserved. Yeah, and it's... Uh... I mean, if you dropped that money for it, I don't think you're going to find anything in it and be like, oh, <laughs> you know, I, I was just impressed front to back with it. And uh, j just on a feel factor, I enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed it. I have some very high quality aircraft in here that I don't enjoy that much for one reason or another, but I've enjoyed the pieces out of that thing. Uh, it, liter you know, literally I once or twice enjoyed it two pieces. <laughs> <laughs> right um yeah that some of that footage is in there as well um the one thing i think that we i would like to kind of go back on when we mentioned something about the gear uh being detailed but uh not the best we'd seen in producing that video i actually noticed something i hadn't noticed which is they had kind of like wear and paint chips on the uh, landing gear assembly i think or the gear doors which I hadn't noticed when we did that. So I know you and I were talking a little bit about kind of like some of the, the shine of the tires and yeah, maybe it, it wasn't extra 10 of, right. yeah, it wasn't this 10 of 10, but it was very close. And then I noticed that other stuff and I'm like, Hmm, kind of wish we'd rephrase that slightly. So I and I builds, thanks for a fantastic product and uh, hope that video does not sell your product short. Right on, right on, yeah. And uh, quite honestly, coming out of the gate, being as quality as it is, it's a little embarrassing that some of the other more developed studios occasionally have sold products that are not as complete as that one is. It, it's actually very interesting that they uh, yeah. home run right out the gate. So uh, this next one, I don't know diddly about. I'm looking at it, though. Fly Tampa Las Vegas. Sure. Well, Fly Tampa has been around for quite a while in the, I think they actually made uh, Microsoft Flight Sim 9 products too. So I'm sure they go back quite a ways, but they have released Las Vegas for X-Plane 11. Uh, of course, they modeled the airport with PBRs, uh, high re high, well, PBRs, PBR materials. Sorry, everyone. It's very late on a Friday evening. Um, uh, high resolution surrounding photo scenery and custom mesh. Uh, Las Vegas is also modeled uh, with custom buildings, as you would kind of expect, I guess, for Sin City, including 3D taxiways, uh, animated cars, and monorails. And, of course, you get dynamic lighting and animated jetways and the visual uh, docking and guidance system. You know, just looking at their stock images, um, first off, I'm really pleased to see they have out there on the ramp the uh, Sands Corporation 747 SPs, awesome, uh, as well as the uh, Janet, oh, was, is that a 400 model? I, I know they had to get rid of their 200s. It looks like a 400. Yeah, it's a, yeah, 400, I think. Was the, did they have a 300 that had the CFMs? Hmm. 
I anyway. am not sure. I, I know it didn't have the uh, the old tubular JT8, so it, mu- it must have been a CFM. Jones. Yeah, the, those ended with the twos. So The uh, yeah. lighting's looking great. They've got like a dusk shot, and the, um, the airport apron is just a really good reflection of the lights. It's pretty sweet looking. Would you call that bathed in soft lighting? Oh, bathed in soft lighting. How's that that's, for a verb? Uh, that's. <laughs> you should work at Bed Bath and Beyond or Bath and Body Works or something a little feminine with that. <laughs> so, uh, uh, fair th- enough. Do you think this is a tough sell from the standpoint? X Plane, you, you know, Vegas is one of its kind of custom. They put a little extra work into it. It's already pretty decent. So do you, do you think this is kind of a tough sell? Like you'd really have to want a much better Vegas? You, you know, I think it depends on how often you fly there first off. And then secondly, like if I was from there, I would probably buy this. Mm. Uh, you know, like you and I have the Mr. X6 Phoenix, which now has kind of gone a little out date with some of the construction more recently completed out there. Okay, fair but, enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times when I fly around here, right, even with it, when it, uh, with it being an airliner, I'll fly to San Diego, to Las Vegas, you know, maybe Salt Lake, something that hour, hour and a half hop. And uh, so if it was a place I would visit more frequently or was from there, I think it's still probably pretty easy. And of course, you're getting you kind of get the improved stuff through X Plane 11, but usually and fly Tampa as as far as I'm aware, I had a really good rep- reputation with uh, their products. So I would suspect it's probably worth the the investment. What are they saying there? $32 on the um, on the news release here from FS Elite. So. Yeah, no, that's, that's not, uh, that's not, you know, this seems about right for a single city scenery pack. But you know what's really killing me here? I'm looking at uh, the screenshot number one. Ah, I see Tropicana there, and it's just it's just crushing me right now because this summer, had it not been for COVID, uh, the Flight Sim Expo was supposed to be held at the Tropicana, which is pictured uh, bottom left if you're, if you're oh, looking yeah. at it there across the street from Excalibur. And uh, mm-hmm. Lee and I were all set to go and meet all of our favorite geeky Flight Sim folks and hang out and just nerd it up for a weekend, but... Uh, was not to be what a bummer all right nope. well, that's that's bittersweet so what's uh what do we got after vegas here well uh, of course big news um i know we're mostly x plane here and have been but microsoft flight simulator was released uh, kind of incorrectly referred to as microsoft flight simulator 2020 uh, of course it has no year actually designated on it so Tim and I were both fortunate enough with the uh, help of FS Elite to get our hands on a copy. So we've been playing that a little bit. I have personally enjoyed it. I'm still learning a little bit. And actually, there will be a video out Sunday morning, uh, which would be, what is that, the uh, 30th at 11Z, I think, is when it goes live. A first impressions by me. Right. And uh, and it's... I, I joked with Lee, it's the uh, the honeymoon video because he's had it for about a week now. He's got 10 hours on his. I think I've only put about four on mine, uh, mostly because life has been insanely busy lately. And uh, I, I would love to have been in it more. Four hours is... <laughs> I had to fight even for that. But we're going to yeah. talk more about that in a minute. So... Um, what do we got going on here with VAT sim compatibility? Is that for Flight Simulator? Yeah, it was for Flight Simulator. They were saying it's going to be VAT sim compatible on release. I haven't gone down that rabbit hole yet. I do intend to at some point. And for for those of you who are maybe a little more unfamiliar with Tim and I, we have young children in the house and are quite busy at home. So uh, the little VAT sim rule of, you know, don't leave your desk is kind of difficult for us to manage so we don't fly on bat sim <laughs> as frequently as maybe we would like so i i do want to look on that or, or um, look into that and be able to talk a little bit about it but also uh, 
a company well known, two companies well known in the flight sim community, Orbex and Carinado, both had day one uh, releases available for uh, Orbex with a sceneries, uh, multiple scenery and airports, I think four or five, and some landmarks for uh, London. And Carinado, of course, releasing their Cessna 182 uh, Turbo. So those were day one releases available through the Flight Sim Marketplace in-game. And then, of course, you can get it at their respective websites. All right. Well, I was just checking out as we go down our list here. And uh, thanks to Lee for compiling these. Our, our podcasts are really his brainchild. Because... Uh, <laughs> I do, I do not do the legwork on this one. I just get on here to chat and keep it entertaining. But uh, I see our next one is the Just Flight BAE 146. And I am loving these screenshots of the cockpit. It looks amazing. I've always liked the cockpit on this thing. I think because it's, uh, you know, it's so rare to have a four engine airliner. I don't know. Yeah. Just, D don't we have one of the uh, flight deck DVDs for these? Uh, BA-146. I moved my DVD I'm, stack. It used to be beside me here. Oh, I, I'm pretty sure we do. It was some... Uh, I think they actually filmed a, a turnaround from somewhere in England to possibly continental Europe and back. Right. Unless I'm thinking about the Fokker 100. Uh, we, we definitely have one of the, that one I've seen. But, um, yeah, so if, you, if you're not particularly familiar with it, the BAE 146 has four engines, but is a regional airliner. So that gives it, uh, you know, short takeoff landing type performance. Think London City. That's really basically what this was uh, dreamt up for. But its, it's niche is also its, its downfall. You don't really need that kind of performance for most. Nor four engines. And, uh, you know, twice the engines is twice the maintenance and twice the problem potential. So there it is. Yeah, we may have to talk to Cal over there and see if we can get our hands on one of those. Cal, if you listen to this, uh, pencil us in. I I'm down for that. What do you think, Tim? Oh, yeah. And uh, our experience so far with Just Flight has been fantastic. Um, I, I had never owned any of their products until we started doing some reviews with FS Elite, and I, I've been really impressed with Just Flight's stuff. I'm pretty convinced if Just Flight makes it, it's going to be pretty decent. Sure, sure. So speaking of developers that I trust and possibly harass at every opportunity to make me a 707, <laughs> what do we have next? Uh, next up would be a Fly J Sims Update 2 for 2020. And of course, one of their, uh, they're working on a couple of big things actually. Uh, Shared Flight has entered alpha stage and they have released a compatibility list. Uh, should we run down that list there, Tim? Um... I think it's worthwhile. I'll, I'll go ahead and start it off there. Um, and of course, for those of you unfamiliar, this is going to allow two players to, uh, or two sim pilots, as it were, to functionally operate the same aircraft from the same cockpit. And I believe it's going to be some server through them, so it should be fairly seamless. Uh, of course, you're going to have their products, the uh, 737-200 and 727, the popular TOLUS Airbuses, the 319 and 21. Flight Factor is going to also have several of their products with the 7.5 and 7.6 collections and A320. They're even including some of the default laminar aircraft, the Baron, the 172, and the 738. And speaking of 738s, the Zebo is included. So Ooh. all of you start lighting up that. Ooh. Ooh. What? That, I was just impressed that it's on there because since it's updated about every seven minutes, um, I figured that would be a hard thing to maintain compatibility. I'm impressed. Well, certainly you're probably going to have to say have the same builds as your buddy. So, <laughs> oh, I can see the forums right now. It's going to be gravy. Oh, yeah, my. they're going to light up Flyjay that the uh, that the Zebo doesn't work with their buddies who's on you know 
beta 58. The other one's on beta 56. So I'm not to mention um, trying to figure out CRM. So. Right. Which, which is a real thing, even in the sim environment. Tim and I have experienced that. Yeah, no joke. Yeah, the uh, IXEG 737-300 is on the list. Hot Starts TBM, uh, product I want to get my hands on at some yeah, point. How, how do we not have that? Does that not occur to you as crazy that neither UOI has that, like, mind blowing? Well, it, actually, it's right there with that Just Flight Arrow. I think that was the... They have a turbocharged one of those that I really want. Mm. And... Uh, of course, Carinado's Bonanza and the Rotate MD-80 rounds out the current compatibility oh. release list. And you left one off. The Hold My Beer SR-22 is also on there. I did. I apologize. You and I have that, so we'll have to try that out at some point. Absolutely. Maybe we can even do one of these podcasts from the aircraft. So uh, in the background of today's podcast should be a lot of b-roll from the flight lee and i are planning to do the second we get off of here and uh one of our long-standing complaints with x-plane has been doing group flights or shared flights on the same flight deck is possible but highly challenging in x-plane and microsoft is not doing the shared flight but is doing the group flight out of the box and uh we're really enjoying that because mm -hmm. it's just great because it's, it's just plug and play. Hey, spawn here. Bam, there we are. Oh, let's go. Yeah, we actually spawned at, um, uh, what was it? Homer, right? And we recreated our live stream. Oh, that, uh, yeah, let's not talk about that. <laughs> well, no, I mean, just, you know, you guys can see it on the channel. We had a live stream that I think was three hours long, but the actual flight was you know, about 30 minutes of banter before flight and then an hour flight. Right. So, you know, we had a wild hair the other day and we actually had some time in the evening. So we fired it up, recreated that flight that you'll see in there should you choose to uh, right. check it out. And it was, you know, we were able to get in the same airport, be there together, take off, start the flight and land in probably the amount of time it would have taken us to <laughs> stumble through connecting um, join fs and yada yada yeah. yada right no and we and we could sightsee because it was like hey dude look at that glacier over there i mean yeah it's really it's great right it was, yeah and we were following each other off our our lights it which, was uh, great up until the scene of the crash <laughs> yeah that's true that that was me that's, i had my first crash in flight simulator i still crashed too i just successfully touched down on the runway before oh. overrunning and crashing um, oh, I, I passed the runway at a, about a 45 degree nose down attitude and found the tree line to the north, I believe. So you, you just made a little bit more work for the NTSB than I did. But um, either way, <laughs> for what it's for worth, I, I think he said that he was able to spot the runway because my light was shining down it. Right. Yeah. So uh, we ingeniously, it's my fault, flew to an unlit airport tucked into mountainous terrain uh at dusk and uh we did not beat the sunlight getting in there and so we were overflying the area and we'd spot the runway and then try to go around in terrain that we can't even see it was bad it was very bad 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 well, uh, well to <laughs> To be fair, it wasn't your fault. As pilot in command, I should have knocked it off. <laughs> well, we, uh, we made a variety of mistakes because by the time we entered into the mountainous terrain, um, the, the sun was low enough that there was not going to be any turning back. But uh, yeah. Well, it, isn't this exactly how it happens in the real world? That whole reason Swiss cheese model, you know, where the holes line up, you know, it's never one thing. It's a series of things. So... Right, it right. happens in flight sim too. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. There, there was. I'm sure you had that point where you realized we're screwed. Like, yeah, like it, the the die is cast. It's too late now. We're gonna have to attempt to land because there's no turning around. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah, I I think we had fuel to divert, but we didn't have time in the real world that night. So a call had to be made. Right. Well, even diverting, uh, it's debatable if we had the climb performance. In terrain that we couldn't see to achieve a safe altitude so yeah fair enough whatever oh, and also for those of you who have flight simulator um 
you pretty much have the dome light in the Cessna 152 and almost no panel lighting. So keep that in mind before you take off on your sunset trip. It goes from too dark to too bright. Mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. Hey, right. let, yeah. let me throw... Let me throw the lasso back on this horse and wrangle it back over to... Yeah, let's, uh, let's do it. We started banter before we finished the news. So, so go ahead, let us Oh, down. yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so Fly J Sim also um, has some links to their UNS-1, which is the uh, Q4XP uh, flight management system. So there are some videos up as well. Uh, of course, that product is continuing to develop, and I think another one that I'm definitely... Uh, excited for i i have the original legacy dash 8 q400 so i hope at some point to get my hands on that one uh, i will say i've watched some of the videos on that um flight management system and i was very impressed uh particularly one of the things they had done was uh is it what would you call it the screen refresh rate like rather than just everything blinks on it has sort of that scrolling look Right, where it, it fills from the top down, and it looks like they're doing a good job. And I have been very curious because Fly J Sim makes awesome stuff, but we've never seen a custom FMC from them before, and sure. that uh, that's that's the hill that most developers die on. So I'm really interested to see how that comes out. Yep, certainly. All right, so what do we got coming from Aerobasque? Aerobasque, another one that I've actually been watching for a while, and Tim, I actually have this on a list on my on my phone as a product to watch for this year, was the Falcon 8X. They have uh, previewed the cockpit. There's some photos up again here. A lot of these are on FS Elite, guys, and uh, the links are down below, but 6,400 miles. That's New York to Moscow direct. Um that's a long time for a biz jet, but you know, I'm kind of a sucker for a good biz jet too. You know, I really like those for some reason that, that challenger that I bought, I think it's great. Aero Basque. I love the DA 62. I have, um, of course they recently released the, what was it? The, uh, Lancer RG, right? Mm. I think that may have been last month actually, but the, uh, the pictures of the flight deck are up. Uh, looks pretty good. Uh, no exterior shots in this one. However, the, the shot from the flight deck back toward the cabin looks pretty nice as well. Uh, so, yeah. They have a trailer video in there, and it's got a lot of really good footage. Okay, I'll have to check that out, actually. Yeah, you can just kind of slide through it and see. And uh, I, I will say I, I'm not blown away by the cabin textures. I mean, they're not bad, but... No one's going to glance at it and ever mistake it for the real thing. But um, cockpit's looking pretty good. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, it's really about how it flies. So, mm -hmm. you, you know, textures only ever bug me like this in a preview screen. Once you're sure. actually in, if the aircraft's operating correctly, uh, I, I find those things pretty forgivable. Oh, yeah. And I think when you get in there and you get the... the sunlight moving around and the shadows casting i think it kind of changes what you may see in some of these promo images i mean some of them are kind of exaggerated and, and better than the real thing and others right. are, are worse it's kind of hard to gauge that sometimes okay but there's one thing this is going to have going for it the the falcon series has to be mm. one of the best looking aircraft on the face of planet earth i mean they're just beautiful I'll give you that, and I will follow that up bizjet wise with presence, um, a Gulf Stream from about the three on, and Citation Ten. How about uh, Global Express? Global Express was yep. Yep. Yeah. Global Express landing looks like an eagle dropping oh, in yep. to catch its prey. It is just ooh. Yeah. yeah, with the leg stuck out and the, the fowler flaps down. Beautiful sight. Yeah. Good uh, good, good nose-up approach angle. Yeah, I'll give you that. That that incredible aircraft. It's also huge, right? I mean, uh, the Global yeah. Express, you're, 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 you're pushing towards, basically, you have an airliner here. Not even, uh, calling it a biz jet is... Um, sure. 
it's it's pushing the the definition there well and speaking of biz jets you know i was talking to someone at work and not too long ago uh martha king was here from king schools they stopped over for fuel at oh, the airport wow yep so uh, a few people who were aware of who they were uh, geeked out about that no nah, that'd be cool that'd be very cool but uh, all right, let's let's roll down to news here. Um, or actually, we're on news. Let, let's finish up here. And we've mentioned the quality flight simulation L ten eleven. There is a slight name change, and I believe they closed one thread and opened another one on the X plane forums to Black Cat Sim. So the L ten eleven, if you're following the quality flight simulation uh, development. That will now be the Black Cat Sim. And I can't remember the gentleman's name that posted on there. It's actually, it's probably on this link that I have here. Maybe I should check that out. But from what I understood, he separated from the team that was um, Quality Flight Sim, uh, Zeke, okay. and has now started the, uh, the Black Cat. Oh, that's interesting. I'm, you know, it's a cool project. We'll see. I don't know anything about this person to to make any wagers as to quality time frame or whatever else but uh certainly there's a hole in the market for these classic airliners l1011 707 dc8 uh don't even get me started on russian stuff although there's a few that exist you Um, have a russian plane sir with a video still in production oh that's my, my, don't pick my wounds. <laughs> we are we it's are not often that you stutter. Usually I bumble. We are eight months, uh, and that video is not done. Um, but that that's it that's started. yeah. Well, it's like your books. It's I, like the books at your house. Bit off more than I could chew. That's a running joke, everybody. I, I have over fifty books in progress in this house, and it's uh, it's not that I don't like finishing books. I just really like starting them even more than I enjoy finishing them. So, uh, I just sort of a <laughs> little bit of book ADD going on. Don't try and build a house. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, oh. that's that's outside my bubble anyway. All right. right, so I see we have uh, some some ongoing updates to uh, the Kolyamata Concord. Yeah. Neither oh, Lee or I have really been uh, actually keeping up with on Concord, which is interesting because uh, when we released our initial look at the Concord, we were the first video on YouTube on it, and yep. it was uh, it was about as viral as any of our stuff had ever gone at that point, and then. It was obvious to us at first that the developer intended to go all the way and mm-hmm. make this seriously in-depth. It was not going to be a get in, push three buttons and go. He was going all the way. And, and these updates just keep rolling out. And it's just sure. one step at a time, getting closer. Uh, you weren't able to get the next update, but uh, I, I got one of them. And the I, whole I flight it. engineer. Oh, you, oh, so you've got it now. All right, great, great. Yeah, because we had, uh, I was given a pre-release after Tim's purchase uh, by the dev. And uh, then, yeah, it reached a certain point, And then I didn't want to reach out to them after I couldn't get that update any longer. And I figured, you know, it, it's Concord. The quality was there. So uh, they got my money in the end anyway. So I'm happy to support that. Right. Good stuff. I, uh, I, I would certainly recommend that to anybody who wants to use it my main thing is i just um i'm always doing something else and if i'm gonna fly it i'm gonna fly it realistically and therefore i pretty much have one route (laughs) and i just am not usually in the mood for flying that so oh well but if you want to go fly and uh into the mocks it's there Yep, yep, that's your 1.2 beta with the change log, and a lot of this stuff uh, in this version 1.2 focused on the auto flights. So you're uh, m- more specifically the vertical nav profiles, I guess. So uh, again, that link is down below. Feel free to check that out, and that one's actually over on the xplane.org forums. All right. And another just flight product uh, we've 
spoken about them at least twice this uh, this podcast. They are actually okay. So when I type this up, it says they're going to add global traffic XP. Uh, they'll add general aviation to it. Uh, I believe as we record this now, it may have already come out within the last day or two. So if you already have global traffic XP, uh, your general aviation will be coming out if it's not out already. Nice. All right, so just a few le- things left here. Uh, Torque Sim has put out an update to that SR22 that we were talking about earlier, addressing some bug fixes that came up after release, so it's good that they're staying on top of those. Mm-hmm. As well as, uh, here's one we have a video on, uh, SSG, Super, what is it, Super Critical Simulation Group, is that what that stands yep. for? Yeah, I believe that's correct. They have finally released the long-awaited uh, version 2.2 update to their 747-8. This includes the freighter, and that is what our video mostly focuses on, is the freighter. Although the release does include updates to the passenger version, and uh, go check out the video. We've got tons of footage on the freighter. It's going to be easier for you to watch that than listen to me blabber about it. But um, if you'll remember, there were questions in the V1 about how's the frame rates on this and some people not liking some things with the FMC. And it does seem like it really has improved on all fronts. Uh, I felt like it was a little less frame hungry than V1 on my system, at least. And the... Uh FMC v, ran better for me. Uh, V2, oh, sorry, right? V2. You had, yes, yeah, you had V1. V2. Thank you, thank you. Yes, the original yeah. V1 uh, was functionally a different product. You can't even get it now. Um, so that's right. I and got I it have V2. That. So yeah, right. Lee is a V1. There's a video on that if you're curious. Um, I jumped in when the V2 came out, which the V2 is really more your, your, your full-fledged X-plane aircraft. And here's the 2.2 that now drops the freighter, which is actually quite neat to play with. I was really digging that. Yeah, and we talked a little bit about that on uh, podcast four as well, a little bit of the beta testing. So if you're interested in hearing about that, go listen to podcast four. Yeah, you can hear us talk all day. (laughs) That's it, at least for a couple hours. All right, so, um, you know, videos that we've been doing recently, I dropped a video on the Pan Am board game. It was an unboxing video. Uh, Might seem a little off topic for us, but, uh, you know, Pan Am is a special love of mine. And in a way, it's still a simulation, although you're more simulating the the business end and uh, historical side of that. Uh, We also have a little cameo of Flight Brothers footage on the Mini Air Crash Investigation channel. They reached out to us and did it the right way and asked us to uh, use some of our footage and credited us accordingly. So if, you, uh, if you're if you into those you know, air crash scenarios and the stories, he's done a really good job fleshing out uh, the story. It's a, uh, it's a lightning strike, it takes down a Pan Am. So uh, check that out. So Lee, yeah, what, what, actually- uh, what do you got in the cooking there? Yeah, I was trying to look up what uh, Pan Am flight that was, but um, yes, so we have, of course, Sunday, the Microsoft Flight Sim first 10 flight hours video scheduled to release at uh, 11Z, so that will be on our channel, and I also have, I don't know when we're going to release this, I think it's going to be sometime in mid-September-ish, it depends on how our video schedule and personal schedule works out. Uh, an air hauler two virtual airline repositioning flight. So there's a video on that with a little bit of flight planning uh, to go along with some questions that we have seen here and there through uh, through the comments, etc. They come and go. So we've seen a few with uh, Sky Vector asking how to use it. So I briefly go over that. And then of course we did the um, I and I builds A300, which is available over on uh, FS Elite dot nets web page slash youtube channel so you can go spend about 13 or 14 minutes if you want to get our first impressions of that wonderful product right oh and that reminds me as as we move into just general banter for a few moments here uh, another video that's in production that i'm working on is uh another air hauler 2 video 
but this one's on setting up a virtual airline. So we made a Flight Brothers virtual airline. Uh, Lee applied. I agreed to let him join my highly esteemed and elite establishment. And uh, we did a few flights. That's part of the, the video fodder for his repositioning flight uh, footage. And uh, had a good time with it. And I think we're going to probably, Lee, are we, we're just going to open that up to the public, right? And just let yeah, people jump I, on in there and we'll we'll maintain it to the best of our abilities and uh yeah be be patient with us yeah i i show how to get there and uh everything on my uh, repositioning flight so i don't know when we want to actually release that it's it's out there it can be joined but tim and i i don't know tim i i was thinking of you know once or twice a week just going up there and throwing throwing stuff up there if people fly it they fly it if they don't then who cares? Right. Well, and we can also set permissions so that people can add, um, people can assign their own jobs and go fly them. So it doesn't True, have yeah. to be, because uh, we're going to need to be hands off. If, you, if you've if you not already gleaned this from listening to other Flight Brothers things, uh, both Lee and I have our own families and our own full-time employment, and uh, we both have small children. And so all of our time is at a premium. And, and one of the best problems we have is uh as flight brothers has grown and our vol you know and fs elite found us and just uh we've got more potential projects that we could do than we could ever have time for right now so that's kind of a cool place to be in sure but uh that said i would really be Andrew. thrilled if that va kicked off and a whole bunch of people are excited because that'd just be a cool way to stay in contact with uh with our viewers yeah sure and uh you know and we do podcasts so you know we're, we're, we're like that now we're, we're big time <laughs> still not content on iTunes. creators sir content creators Everything. right with capital c's the, the only thing we need to uh get into is tiktok right that's that, i think that's going to be your job right I think I'm gonna have to ask my 11 year old because I don't know. The... <laughs> how's your what? How's your dance moves? <laughs> they're they're pretty terrible. That's like not my thing. I'm better at making videos and podcasts than I am at dancing. Right. Hey, so... hey well, all right. Let, let's let's kick this on. Um, I'm about to cough and choke on something. Hold on. <coughs> Excuse me. Death. Yes. Real professional. Hopefully, um, it's not COVID. All right. Yeah. Uh, kidding. So, are we are we gonna do a little more banter, or, or you think we're we're about yeah, good here? Yeah, we're. I mean, we're we're close. I, I think one of the things you and I were talking about was uh, the online multiplayer aspects with X Plane, Join FS versus a game. You know, now Microsoft Flight Simulator having that as a native component of it, mm -hmm. and. Uh, of course, for the people that fly online, you have that sim. But as we've discussed, we can't really enjoy that. So, you know, how are you going to use these sims? And the video I did with Microsoft Flight Simulator that will be coming out in a few days, it's not a comparison. It's not a um, X-Plane versus Microsoft Flight Simulator. But I have some friends I simmed with uh, during my time in the Air Force that have gotten out of flight sim and of course i let them know this product come out we used to do flight sim 9 and um you know i did some video clips here and there of some stuff and just general conversation with them so it's not i i think when having this discussion with us being a primarily x plane channel at this point mm -hmm. it's impossible to not draw some comparisons so hopefully i've i've done that i mean I think they can both coexist, but like you and I talked about, and like we're going to do as soon as we get done with this, you know, we're going to hop in in a matter of seconds. We're going to be airborne flying wherever it's daylight because that's what you do with live weather and uh, in the online ecosystem. Exactly. And uh, that's my favorite thing about it. I mean, I don't want to say too much because uh, Lee's got a great video for you tomorrow and you should go see that. But. Um, just for my two cents, I completely anticipate keeping both simulators. Uh, mm. and, and not just because I have literally 
probably thousands, easily over thousand dollars worth of add-ons. Uh, we we should tabulate that one day. I'd be really curious what all this junk costs. But I don't uh, think I want to. Well, let's, I'll tell you what. If we do it, make sure our wives don't listen to the podcast. <laughs> I don't think they listen to us at all. Shh. No. Whether it's oh, fair point. In we're, we're safe. We're safe. So, um, at the moment, I'm currently geeking out with VFR and Flight Sim. So, if I, I mean, for Microsoft, I have literally a list. I need to go to the Faroe Islands. I need to go up to Alaska. I need to go fly over my friends' houses. I need to go back to the house I grew up in. I want to see this airport and that airport and recreate my first time flying a Cessna. I mean, I have this list of things I want to see because the visual experience is so darn compelling, amazing. Now, that said, when I actually like want to fly a plane, X-plane every time at the moment i mean maybe i'll feel different later when the add-on aircrafts come in and i get more into it but for right now if i if i plan on vfring and sightseeing straight to microsoft if i want to sim sim back to x-plane well yeah and you know with with ortho being free and available for x-plane you can approach those visuals and here's another thing is Okay, Microsoft, or I don't know how you pronounce it, Azobo Studios, whoever actually did it for them or whatever. If you've got, and, and I don't know how much Laminar Research has, but I would guarantee you Austin Myers' bank account and Microsoft's are on two different levels. Oh, yes. <laughs> so we're not really comparing apples to apples. So, you know, for me, it's, you can have a similar experience one versus the other. I mean, X-Plane uh, 11 now is, you know, several years old. I mean, we've been doing it for, what, two, two and a half years now, and it's been out for a few years before that. So when you get the new kid on the block with all the shiny toys, um, you're talking about a product that's three, four years further along in technology and development, so. Right. Well, you know, at, at, at the best possible scenario, this is, uh, this is capitalism at work and competition doing what we want competition to do. Uh, left to his druthers, I don't get the impression that Austin Myers and the X-Plane team were ever probably going to give us a substantially better uh, terrain mesh and autogen than they had already done. I mean, they have been improving it, but... You know, the water still kind of iffy. You still don't have volumetric clouds. If you want ortho, you got to get it yourself. Uh, forget about seasons. You know, there's plenty of things you can pick apart in the visual sure. realm. Not that important if you're sim simming, but if you're down low and slow, it, it, it's, it is a killer, uh, particularly if you're trying to actually VFR from charts. I mean, there's, there's enough information there to match up but yep. um, it's not like Microsoft where literally if you've seen it before, you're like, I know exactly where I'm at. So uh, this is a kick in the pants for X-Plane. Like the cards are on the table and the uh, one the one thing that really is glaring is those visuals. So I would expect that we're going to see X-Plane forced to reevaluate uh, their visuals and maybe make it a little bit higher priority. Uh, obviously, they've spent extensive time on flight modeling and accuracy in that department. They've done great. Which but, no one will argue. Uh, right. Um, the visuals aren't bad. But no. Com compared to, like, World Ortho, well, that's a tough order. Well, yeah, and I think Microsoft, um, you know, with their infrastructure and their fingers and everything they they can doing what they're doing, which that streaming mm -hmm. being data in is the most economical way to do it because, you know, we don't have, I don't have a two, what, what is a petabyte hard drive, you know, of the global scenery. You know, I don't, I don't have that. So right. what they're doing is giving it to me in bytes as I need it. And you know, you can appreciate that that would be the most efficient manner to allow that to happen. And to be honest, this is a good first world problem we all have. You know, 
that we have two simulators that we can fake fly our fake airplanes around the world and anywhere we want to be. I mean, it's right. It, it's a good problem to have. And the biggest thing for me with Flight Sim 9, and I can see it happening now, is people are invested in their sims, whether it's P3D or FSX. Once you spent hundreds or thousands of dollars in your setup, it's yours. There's that ownership that you've mm -hmm. invested in it. And none of us want to take and toss that away. And for all of you guys listening, if you've listened this far, thank you. But we're not bailing on X-Plane 11. Oh, no. We, no, we're, no. Yeah, we're hoping to increase our audience, increase our our reach, and maybe um, you know get to people that we wouldn't have otherwise. So we're going to be dabbling in both. And we'll try and keep an eye out You know, with Tim and I bouncing things off of each other so that we're not dropping five Microsoft Flight Sim uh, videos in a row because it's the hotness and kick X-Plane 11 to the side. So, uh, you know, with FS Elite, you know, we'll stay invested in their products uh, for X-Plane 11, but now we'll also be able to do some Flight Sim stuff as well. So, or Flight Simulator, sorry. Well, and, and, you know, one of the other great pluses uh, and a, a line I think Lee has coined here and we've gotten a lot of mileage out of it is, a sim is a sim. So one of our hopes, uh, believe it or not, neither Lee nor I actually planned on buying Flight Simulator. It was uh, sort of gifted to us as part of our work over at FS Elite. And I mean, I'm pleased to have it. I'm pleased to mess with it. But I didn't need it. And mm -hmm. uh, what we are seeing, though, and it's super cool, the Flight Sim community is overnight growing and growing because it's very appealing people who were not aviation geeks but who do want to see their house from the air and do want to see the seven wonders of the world from the air are now entering into this aviation realm and they're going to need a lot of guidance and uh that that that's what we've always set out to do was to try and you know just bring information and especially for new simmers it's a very complex process we're trying to make it as uh, painless as possible and since a sim is a sim, why not? Yeah, exactly. And on top of that, the the community, like you're saying, as a whole, hopefully will grow, you know, and that'll be passed on. But with the uh, what Microsoft Flight Simulator is also going to do with its availability on console is it's going to bring even more people in there. You're going to hopefully reach a younger audience. I think most of us flight purest flight simulators are probably um, not older numerically but older in our life whereas you know if you get the kid that grew up with the Xbox controller in his hand you know you might have the five or six year old playing on the Xbox when he may not have done that until he was 10 or 11 or 12 on the PC right and and a lot of people we see this all the time as well they may not have you know fifteen hundred to four thousand dollars for a gaming computer but they can come up with the four or five hundred dollars for an xbox oh so. you have hit quite the topic because i've been rolling this around in my head mm -hmm. price accessibility and yeah. the xbox console gives you a couple things a the console's cheaper B, you already have your peripherals. I can't tell you how many times we see on the forums some poor person, I, I, I mean poor in the, the, like I feel bad for you that you're trying to sim with this, not necessarily right. financially poor, but uh, although that could definitely be part of why you're in the situation, but you'll get somebody who's got a laptop and they're flying with the uh, trackpad because they don't have a joystick yet or they can't get a joystick or, and and I just feel awful because it's it's such a rotten way to fly and even though I, I still cringe at the idea of flying with an Xbox controller at least it is going to have a better chance of mimicking what you would get with a, a joystick because at, you know, at least you got the thumb joysticks and I mean a mouse is just trash to fly with <laughs> it's bad Come on, man. I told you you don't fly with your thumbs. You fly with your fingers. I think that was right before you crashed my little electric cub. Yeah, let's not talk about that. <laughs> I still got to fix that, by the way. 
Uh, yeah, don't let me fly your RC aircraft. It's um, I, I don't harder than it looks. I don't have the visual spatial to translate the inputs into what's happening in the environment. I I need to be inside the aircraft, or it ain't gonna happen, guys. I'm sorry. That's not well, my, not my skill set. It, at least it wasn't a big, you know, like 60 cc weed eater powered, you know, cub with a. I don't know six foot wingspan so we had that going for us yikes yep oh boy well um one last thought about the accessibility i don't know what the price on console will be i'm assuming it'll be about the same but if sure. if we were to compare x-plane to microsoft to get a comparable level so like let's say you know similar number of aircraft similar amount of airports i mean your what microsoft gives you for like what 65 bucks it's pretty incredible yeah. i mean that would be the equivalent of buying x plane and spending the rest of your life generating ortho or mm -hmm. going out and buying all the orbix or something i mean so really for an out of the box for 65 bucks i mean it's it's an incredible deal but obviously most of why they can offer such an incredibly low price is it's microsoft they can afford it and also they knew this was going to sell like hotcakes and uh, so they can distribute that production cost quite easily you know and that's what i was going to say too is that we look at the uh, x plane facebook group that has like what 25 26 000 members okay if that was your entire population you have to spread the explain development cost, cost, excuse me, I forgot how to speak, um, across those 26,000. Microsoft right. has now done that across PC gamers and now Xbox users. So, of mm -hmm. course, supply and demand and, and sheer numbers, I mean, it's how auto manufacturers work, right? The more cars you can sell, the cheaper you can sell each one for. Right, and it's why... Um... I'm certain no one in this podcast is the people that do this, but we'll get contacted occasionally on Instagram by oh, some poor fool who thinks we'd be willing to uh, pirate an aircraft or, or give them ours, which would be enabling them to pirate it. And it's like, what's wrong with you? And it's, I, I mean, other than just, you know, the golden rule, it's wrong to steal, y you have to realize you are completely crippling the ability to get these products out there and driving the prices up of the ones that exist by doing so so if it's worth mm -hmm. flying it's worth buying end yeah, of story they're... well and i think i'd suggest it to you before right like i had this uh this little theory of a time um rental program oh where... <laughs> self-destructing aircraft <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically like, hey, I want to buy your $60 airplane. What's it like? Well, I'll tell you what. How about for five bucks? I'll let you fly that plane for 10 flight hours. And then if you like it, you can come back and buy it. I have seen uh, self-destructing games and stuff like that. Um, I even think the old X-Plane might have had something like that where you, you got it for free, but you could only go so far from the airport or it only ran for a certain length of time. And yeah, no, that would... If developers could find a way to uh, to do that and guarantee themselves that you wouldn't just hack around it and re-enable a product, that would be a fantastic way. Although, you can always just come to the Flight Brothers and or go to FS Elite and watch our reviews, and you'll get a pretty darn good idea what I, uh, the product's going to look like. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty certain you would have the best possible information that you could ever have. I watching our videos. Absolutely. Well, I mean, <laughs> you, if you've watched a few of ours, you, you kind of know where we stand. I think we're pretty objective. Uh, Lee's the more seriously hardcore aviation uh, engineering type sim guy, and I'm I'm the more seriously casual simmer. And uh, I still nerd out on it, but you know, when we have epic crash stories, they're always mine and stuff like that. <laughs> Yeah, that's a fact. I mean, that, that, I have one this year, and that was the other day. 
Oh, see, I have like one a day, usually because I do things like, hey, I wonder if we can loop the A300. And the answer to that is yes, by the way. It, it was yes, and that footage will be on uh, the video coming out in a couple of days. So be sure to check that. Or no, sorry. Yeah, that one's the one out. That's out now. Yep, FS yeah, Elite. A300. FS Elite. If you want to see an A300, do a loop and uh, see what happens, go check it out. All right. Well, we are dying to go fly Microsoft Flight Sim. So um, as we've often said, we might be running out of time. But we're certainly not running out of things to talk about. So thank you for joining us here on podcast number five, and we'll see you about a month from now for podcast number six. So until next time, I'm Tim. And I'm Lee is what they call me. So remember, plan the flight. And fly the plan. If you enjoy this content, consider buying us a coffee to show your support. Visit us at buymeacoffee.com slash flightbrosft or search for us from the menu if you'd like to contribute. A link will be provided in the video description below.